Hello, everybody. I'm back. <laughs> oh, what a week it's been, but how happy I am to see you. I'm very happy to see you and to be back because it's not been a fun week. And at first I thought I just had a little bit of a tummy bug, but then I looked it up because somebody had said a tummy bug was going around. And what I had was what people refer to as the stomach flu. It's not technically a flu, but it's when you get a head cold and congestion, a headache, the other things that go with a stomach bug. It's like you get the whole kitchen sink thrown in. So hi, Laura. It, it was... It was tough this week because I would think I was getting better and I would get hungry and I would eat something and it would make me feel terrible. Now, I'm going to take a moment to have a pity party for me and then I'll move on. Because Friday, Friday I was supposed to get my mammogram and go get my next COVID shot and my flu shot. And I tilted my head funny. And sure enough, one of those crystals came loose in my ear canal. And I've had vertigo since Friday. So Mark helped me get everything down. I've been doing those little exercises that you try to do to get the crystal to go back in the inner ear where it's supposed to be. So I've got vertigo on top of just getting over being sick. So <laughs> it's just like, but the good news is my blood sugar is excellent. My blood pressure. Oh my gosh. It's so good. It's like 107 over 63. You know, I mean, it, it, it's good. So all of my signs are saying I'm fine. In fact, Mark's eye exercise. I continued to exercise even though I was sick. And he was like, boy, she's obsessed now. <laughs> but I'm getting better. Just be patient with me. And then I'm hoping to go this week to get my mammogram and then plan to make sure I'm feeling good. Then get my next, my newest COVID and my flu shot. Because I don't want to get sick again this winter. So, you know, when Mark was gone on his trip and I didn't sleep well, every time if I don't get my proper sleep, I get sick. I used to when the kids were little and Christmas was such a big thing. I'm straightening up my desk because I haven't been down here all week and everything's a mess here. <laughs> but... um when my kids were little, I did, I was Christmas. I did everything. I cleaned the house. I cooked the big meal for the big family coming and the whole, and I did all of the shopping and, and most of the wrapping and all of that. Every year, January was my month to get sick because it, that's just the way it went. Svetlana, beautiful lady. Hi, hon. Boy, are we thinking of you we were so proud of our wonderful president when he said this week that not only are we going to stand by the innocent people in Gaza and in Israel, but we're going to continue our commitment to Ukraine. And it, it's been long enough, and that's, it's got to stop. So we, are, we admire Ukrainians so much. And we're going to keep doing what we have to do because it's just not right. It's just not right. Shouldn't be allowed. So it's so good to see you, sweetheart. So, okay, here we go. Lisa's the first person here. Hi, Lisa. Lisa, I tell you what, I don't put these away because I'm so excited about making that Alaska quilt and really hoping we get that class I think we should, but I really hoping we get that class at this year's Myrtle Beach quilt party. I'm getting excited. I need to go ahead and pick out my fabric because Lisa and I've already agreed. If somehow we don't get that class as our first choice, 
we're still going to make Alaska together. So we're going to do that. I'm excited. So anyway, <laughs> I found a little note on the desk. I tell you what, I haven't been down here for a week. And so it's like, oh, my poor plant. I don't know if I can show you my poor plant. Oh, nope. Can't show you the poor plant. I had to turn it too far and it made the, it made the little thing go out. So I better not show you, but my poor plant is, is all um, dehydrated. So I had to quickly water it so it'll pop back up, but I have a big peace plant right here and it, it missed me. Um, Roger Swain was my favorite gardener on the Victory Garden. And he used to say, the best thing for a garden is the gardener's shadow. Is that the sweetest saying in the world? And it's so true. Because if you're out there looking at your gardens, garden, spending time in it, then guess what? You're going to notice all the little things it needs. So let me go back to seeing who's here. Uh, and thank you. I was hoping to do Thursday night. It was so funny. I didn't feel good enough because have you ever been had a tummy bug where as long as you sit very still, you feel better. But if you get up, move around, it's like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> so um, I tried. I thought Thursday, I've got to get up. I've got to do a show tonight. And I got in there and I was trying so hard to work on it. And I didn't get very far. I said, Mark, I do not feel good enough to put all that makeup on and um, to put all that makeup on and get dressed. And then I won't have anything to talk about. So he said, yeah, you know, might want to go ahead and cancel it. But I was going to show you, we're doing portraits on our Art Quilt Thursdays. I love our Art Quilt Thursdays. And I've been thinking some more. I may not cancel Art Quilt Thursdays. Let me just see because, you know, I've missed y'all so much. And I realize one of my problems is everything is such a mess down here because I've never fully cleaned it. And even in my frame room upstairs. So I'm going to work hard on getting those rooms clean and organized because believe it or not, I can be more productive. If everything is in its place, I can go right to it. So, but I wanted to show you, I've been working some more on my, um, I've been working more on my, I'm still trying to get the eyes right. I think I've got the eyes a little too big, so I'm going to work on fixing those. But um, I found that if I, once I get it put in place by using, you know, making the pattern phase, then when it's all done, put down, then I can go back and look at the original and tweak some of the things. Like I changed his mouth. His mouth is much better now. So not everything shows up on the pattern just the way you would like. And so I can, I can go back and put a little tweaking. And then I might do, I got to be careful. If I've been down, I get so dizzy. But, um, um, and I've had this before. I don't know if any of if any of you have had it where your those ear crystals get loose and you're like, woo. <laughs> Mark was like, I'm getting worried about you. You're so sick. I'm like, I'm fine. So that's why I check my blood sugar and check my blood pressure. I said, I'm fine. It's just I've been sick. So here we go. But to, to together, we did make four, five quarts of spaghetti sauce yesterday. So that was nice. And uh the best words any woman wants to hear from her man. I'll help you clean the house. Oh boy. I tell you, I thought sign him up for another 20 years. So he helped me clean the house yesterday. Cause you know, you're not feeling well and you're looking around and you're seeing the dust bunnies are starting to get a little scary big. <laughs> And uh, and you don't feel good. And you're like, oh, it's you know, it's all piling up on me. You know that stuff. So I at least feel better that uh, got the house clean, got the bathroom floor scrub. Yay! So okay, now let me see who else is here. Mitty, hi, sweetheart. 
There's our Marsha. She's the dear soul. And Laura's here. Hi, Marsha. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm doing better and better. But it hung on. And it's the worst when you get hungry and then you eat and it's like, oh gosh, you know, don't. And you can't touch your abdomen. It's so sore. But it's better. Mary's here. And you know what? Thank you for some... Oh, y'all were so nice in leaving the get well messages. Sadly, I felt too bad to write back, but I thought of you a lot. <laughs> I appreciated everyone and all of them, Polly, everybody. I thank you. And you know, I'm not feeling well if I don't answer your email back. So, Anne is here. Hey, out driving. Okay, Anne. That's great. Okay, just drive safely. <laughs> All right, let's see who else is here. Debbie's here. Yay. Yeah, I'm definitely feeling better, better, better. Uh, oh, what's with Jody? Let's see. Uh oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Yay, Jody! One year anniversary of being cancer free. Yay! I just had my third year anniversary. September 28th was the day that I had my kidney surgery. And uh, up till now, all free and clear. Aren't these anniversaries so precious? And you know what my doctor said to me? He said, Psh, you know, you bet once you get past a year or two, then you can, you know, it's kind of like relax a little bit. It's okay, you know. And so I thought, if he says that, then that's mine. <laughs> I'm claiming that one for me. So, okay, here we go. But congratulations are Jody's the best news. So, okay, did I, I want to make sure I don't miss anybody. There's Polly. Oh, thank you. I've always said my favorite color is blue. So, thank you. Um, <laughs> you know what? I'm hoping I lost some weight because it was hard to eat, let me tell you. But my apples, honey crisp apples, the way to go. They're so good. So... And plenty of rice, applesauce, toast, things like that. Just something bland. <laughs> uh, it's so good to see Svetlana. There is Cheryl Hogan. How wonderful she was here, um, Jody, for you to share your news with. Because Cheryl is a champion for women's breast cancer. And uh, a dear, along with our dear Debbie Dingle, Love her and her blue eyeshadows are so cute. I love it. So, okay. Diana's here. Hi, sweetheart. And then let me see. Sonia's here. Oh, Sonia, it's so good to see you, sweetheart. Joni is here. Yay. We love our Joni. She did a great quilt during our. Um, Bargello class this July. We got to figure out which one, what class we're going to do next July. We'll do it again because I loved it. And you know, in July, it's so hot. You don't feel like going anywhere. It's a perfect month for taking a class. So y'all be thinking about it and I'll put all the ideas in, in a, a, ba a basket and we'll draw one and do it. So, oh, Jody, I am just so happy for you, sweetheart. And I hope Terry's feeling better. And we're thinking of Terry because he's a good man. He's a good man. So, boy, that, yeah, you're right, Cheryl, that year did go by fast. You know, when you're facing a cancer fight, it's scary. It's overwhelming. It feels like your life stops. But re just remember all of our experiences and know that there is something on the other side of the fight. Hang tough, gals. Hang tough. And, uh, mm. and Jody was a real pioneer taking medicine as an experimental and giving other women hope. So way to go, our Jody. All right. Y'all are so wonderful. It's so good to see all of you. Pat is here. Hello, Miss Pat. Becca Bradley from Ohio. Oh, I almost missed her. Don't want to miss her. 
So anyway, it is so good to see you. I love the fall colors. Looking out the window, it's like eye candy. I just adore it. And, um, oh, little thing to come coming up. I've been trying a little bit here and there to straighten up my upstairs room. And that's my frame room where I keep some of my supplies. And I found my felting supplies. So next week, tune in to see some very rudimentary felting. Now, one of y'all is also doing some felting. And they have a felting machine, I believe. So send me pictures of your felting. So I'm going to bring down my wool and my my just my little hand done felting supplies. And I'm going to show you this. The reason I like to show you so many ideas is not because I want you to have to try all of this. But sometimes you just never know what's going to be the thing that catches you and doesn't let you go. So it that would Dan, he came to clean. Yay. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, you went to the parkway, Polly. Oh, that's beautiful. Cheryl saw Debbie Dingle in our race for the Cure October 8th. She's so good. She's so, so good. And you know, our representatives like her give me hope. And that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> so also next week, I've been wanting to do this. And I saw this in a magazine a while, a while back. And I've been doing a little research on it. But making a cuff, making a cuff bracelet. Now, now. This is a wide cuff for me. Ever since I went through the change, I don't like anything on my neck and I don't like white wide cuffs on my wrist. They feel make me feel hot. So I'm going to do a narrower cuff. And I think I'm going to do a cuff with a closing so it doesn't have to be tight. So what I want you to do this week is start looking for interesting fabrics. Now, if you have a tapestry type fabric, well, you've already got a head start. But even if you don't, find an interesting fabric, find some beads that go with it, find some threads or yarns that would really give you some great texture. Figure out what type of closure you're going to put on yours. And I have a heavy interfacing called buckram. If you don't have heavy interfacing, fusible interfacing, or just regular heavy interfacing, you can use numerous layers of fusible. Because to make a cuff, you're going to want it to be substantial enough that it holds its shape. And we're going to have so much fun. I mean, look for interesting little charms. Do you have a go through your jewelry box? Sometimes jewelry boxes can be a treasure trove because you'll have only one of an earring. You lost the other one or a, 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 a little old ring or something. But find interesting little doodads to put on your cuff bracelet. This one's got buttons on on some, beading on some. And if you don't have a fascinating fabric, you can make it yourself. Because we, this past year or more, have been loving hand embroidery again. Speaking of hand embroidery, when I didn't feel good, I said, I kept looking at this fabric I bought. I want to make a boho type jacket uh, or shirt. I want to take this fabric, which is pre-printed. I know it's cheater. I don't care. <laughs> but this is the fabric I bought that was made in Africa. And I washed it to get the excess dye. I mean, you have excess dye, but the excess wax out of it. And 
So what I did just to make myself feel better is I started learning the, someone help me out with the word, the word disappeared on me, the word for the Japanese form of mending. And Sashiko, thank you. Boy, Laura is quick. That is, that is great. So what I'm doing is using this as a cheater to learn Sashiko. And Sashiko is this thread here. And why I love this, I am starting to be very fond of the humble arts. The humble arts, not putting down the art. It evolved from people repairing clothing because at different times through history, clothing was so precious, so expensive. And in fact, during, you know, like colonial times, when you died, they sold your clothes to a clothes seller and he would go down the street with hats piled up on his head with numerous shirts and jackets on and carrying dead people's clothes to sell because it was that precious. But anyway, this is a form that originated in Japan. It's a way of repairing clothing using the stitches and a way of um, putting patches on clothing. And then it evolved with women being so talented like they are and not wanting just to do the same thing every time, making beautiful stitches. So it has become its own artwork. Oh, I didn't bring it down, but I bought actual um, traditional sashiko thread for this project. It's, there it is right there. And then I wax it really good because it's kind of a soft thread, so I don't want it to fray. So I use, um, yeah, I love it too. And it's just the humble hand arts. And that makes it so special. So I started on this to make me feel better. And as I do a patch, I will cut it out and I will put it on what the garment that I want to have it on. And I haven't decided yet what garment. I could use a heavy sweatshirt and, make, and cut it down the center and make a jacket of it. I could use a lighter weight denim shirt and put the patches on it. I haven't decided. I looked into pricing denim. I don't want to spend $40 to make a denim shirt or jacket. So I'm, I'm going to try to use something I have that I don't wear often. That would become more precious after I decorate it. So that is my start at Sashiko. And do you see my paper mache pumpkins from last year? I don't know if you remember me making those last year for Halloween. And I put them in a plastic bag in the attic. They came out beautiful. So the seed, what I sealed them with were great. No bugs got into them, nothing. <gasps> Lisa, that's a great idea. Lisa said, check Goodwill for denim denim jackets and shirts. That is perfect. I will do that. Thank you, Lisa. So I wanted to show y'all that on days that I felt good enough, I started applying the flowers to my neutral blooms, Alex Anderson quilt along quilt. So I've got three of them finished and one more started, and so there it is. And I don't know if I showed you this, but this is, if I, if I could take a moment to show you this, because to me, it's important. All right, I'm sewing these on by hand, but you know you can do them by machine. But this, the backing of these is, is freezer paper. And then I do my tiny little applique stitches but then okay I'm doing this side and I do not want the paper to be inside there because it's not archival paper so what I do is I stitch around oh, whoops let me I stitch I start here now the the circle is already stitched on the petals I have the flowers pre-assembled so I start stitching here and I go up 
and around to about here. When I get there, I make a double knot, I mean a, a double stitch, so it kind of holds it. Then I move my needle out of the way. I put it in here with, you know, do it a couple times to hold it good. Then I'll come in back here. And I only do this when I have an inch left to go on the last side. And then I kind of just pull this, pull this loose from the freezer paper. Then I reach in and try, and this would already be sewn down. I reach in and try to tear it, pull it from inside here. And sometimes it takes several pieces to get it out. So I finished pulling all of the pieces out. Now, and that's why I make sure I've sewn all the way around three quarters of the way. Then what I do is that last inch that I had to peel it off, I press it back in place and finish stitching. I don't take the paper out sooner because then all of the edges would get wonky because the freezer paper holds the edges down nice and tight for me. Now, there is another way you can take the paper out. You can turn it over and where it's sewn, you'll get to, you'll see right here where it's sewn. You can take some sharp scissors and you can cut in the middle of the sewn down leaf. Then through that hole, you can use tweezers or hematostat, uh, hematostat, you can take out the paper. I don't do it this way. And the reason I don't do it this way is because um, it weakens the fabric. And I don't want to start anything, you know. Yes, I am going to eventually have this quilted. But if I don't have to cut a hole in the, in the back, that's a good thing. So that's how I get all my papers out. But I leave them in until I've, like this one is already sewn all the way around. But I stopped right there, pulled the paper out, then sewed. And the reason I took this paper out beforehand is because I can't reach this when I'm doing all of these. So that's just a little hint. I absolutely love the freezer paper method of making the applique. It makes the edges so much nicer, smoother, because I usually do um, needle turn applique. Oh boy, what did I do now? Hold on. I usually do needle turn applique, but I have to be honest, as many years as I've been doing it, it doesn't have a smooth look as freezer paper applique. Speaking of freezer paper, I just opened um, I had two boxes of freezer paper. I've used one up. I opened up my second one. So I told Mark, Mark, when you go to Walmart grocery, because he does that once every two months, he'll go there and get some, get the basics. And um, I said, grab me some freezer paper because I get panicky. People aren't using freezer paper like they used to. In fact, I would bet, I would bet that quilters use more freezer paper than anyone. So he went to Walmart. There was no freezer paper. So what he did bring me, bless his heart, I didn't even tell him, you know, I don't think. He brought me my first box of parchment paper. I love parchment paper. I'm so excited to have it. It is, it's wonderful. You can kind of see through it. It's non-stick, like the papers that come on fusible. It's got, this one has a grid on it. How cool is that? And you get it. It's Reynolds Kitchen's parchment paper. So I'm real happy. And I'll show you why I used my first piece of that today. All right. So, oh, and I, I need to put this little pattern for this on our site. Because that is so cute. So bring this. I'm going to make the next one out of cardstock. So it really holds its shape. But I think that is really cute. So he's over here. And on my front porch, I put out a hanging skeleton and two 
Halloween pum, uh, plastic pumpkins. So that, that was fun. I am a sucker for holidays because you know what? Life is hard work and we need to celebrate everything we can think of to celebrate. Did he find a parchment paper in a box? Yes, it's in the box. And it was funny. There's a sp certain way you can pull the parchment paper out that it's supposed to help straighten it so it's not curly. <laughs> I thought that was so cute. But um, yes, in the baking, oh, baking aisle. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so that's great. Oh, goodness. Oh, your mother told you she pulled apart the thread of the old clothing to sew with during the Depression. Wow. You know, think about it, too. That, oh, man. Mary, thank you for telling us that. Costco had denim jackets for 20 Yay. Oh, my gosh, yeah. You can get a linen jacket. You can try your hand at painting. I mean, denim jacket painting on it. You can do hand embroidery, colorful embroidery. You can do beadwork. You can do boho. I mean, you, there's so much to do. So I love that. Oh, wow. Wow, Marsha. So, all right. Now let's get to today's project. Oh, I wanted to tell you too. Wait till I show you pictures. Joni, Joni, not Jody, but Joni has started taking her strip scraps and making roping with it. So let me type in this shortcut that you can go look at a YouTube video and learn to make your own roping. www. Whoops. Let me click in the right place. Oh, that's neat, Marsha. It comes in smaller pieces. www. YouTube.com forward, whoops, C O M forward slash watch, whoops, question mark, little v, um, question mark, little v equals. Let me bring it closer so I don't have to keep looking so far. Every time I look to the left, it makes me dizzy because that's the side that my ear is acting up. All right. 8-C-E-A-M. Big X, little X, big Y, 3, 1, big U, ampersand, P, Equals two, four, two, little s. Yay. Now I have to go like that. All righty. Oh, that's neat. Oh, between paintings. That's perfect. Yep. Keep your own denim. Georgette, hi, hon. You're never late here. We're happy to see you. Well, while I've got this in my hand, I've shown you my UFO project. Because remember, everything I'm making, I have to also work on my UFO. I showed you. Oh, I haven't shown you the progress on my garland, but I'll show you that. Um, we're going to today work on a pumpkin pillow. I've done a lot on my triptych. And I've shown you my art quilt and told you about the fabric roping. So I can't wait to see what Joni makes with it. But there's a special way that you twist it that it holds together so you can make your own fabric yarn. How cool is that? All right. So this is a leftover piece of upholstery fabric. We used to have a show, uh, a store called, was it Mary's? In Hendersonville, North Carolina, it was wonderful. And she had all kinds of upholstery fabric. So I would buy upholstery fabric. Oh, jo Georgia, I have to go. Or, oh, she's saying nice to see you. So I had this left over because I would buy upholstery fabric and make pillows. Pillows for the camper, pillows for the car, 
pillows for the couches upstairs. So I had this left over. I pieced it, and this is going to be for my pumpkin pillow for um, the, ho the fall holidays. So we'll do that a little later. The last week, I gave you a crafty shortcut, and you could go and download some wonderful fall things to do. Now, this week, I found through Country Living quilt pumpkin patterns and i'm going to put it on our site i hope i can find it again but it had like 25 ways to decorate a pumpkin easily and one of them was to use quilt patterns and either paint these on or carve them and knowing me i would paint them on this year <laughs> but just a little reminder that quilt patterns can make a fun Pumpkin, and even if you have a plastic pumpkin, you can paint that on. Just use regular acrylic paints, and if you want, you can seal it with what it, the sealer of your choice. Okay, so now I've got this to make with you in just a few minutes, but I want to show you. Whew, it is hard to be dizzy every time I turn my head. It's like Whoa. <laughs> and you just never know when that particular turn of your head is going to get you. All right. My triptych is finished so far as making new blocks and binding it. And I know that I, I made Joni a little nervous because I took and made this whole entire thing and then just took and cut it. And that felt really good, I have to tell you. So here is the section with the moon. And what I wanted to show you is I went on the computer and printed out pictures of streaks across the sun and a picture of the moon from the North American hemisphere. Because I wanted to kind of give that to... So that's why I did thread painting in the design that I did here so that it looks more like the moon. And then my final piece, and I, I Melanie, I don't think is here, but I wanted to thank her. Who, any of you that said use the dark red for the binding, you were right on. So here is the sun. Okay. Oh, not supposed to have that on there yet. Okay, here is the sun. What I did for quilting, let me see if I can show you the back. Here is the quilting. And mostly what I did was follow, echo the curves that are in the different striations of the sky. Now, I have a couple ideas. How am I going to hang this? Okay. Oh, oh, good. I'm so glad. Yeah, I think it's going to be a lot of fun to make them. And, okay. Look, mountains always go down. So, and I will hang this up so you can see it. So, here are the first two sections. Let me see. Here is the third section. So I have to figure, how can I hang these? Oh, and let me tell you, you know I'm always very honest with you. I was in such a hurry to do this for the show. And it's a lot, you know, 13 by 10, 130. No, it was more than that. But one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, I guess it was 130 blocks, 13 rows of 10 blocks each. So it was a lot of uh, piecing, paper piecing the things, but I love the result. Um, I'm not sure if I, ch I chose the sky blue thread, but I don't know if it looks as good when you do it on the rest. Now, for the sun, I used an orange thread. I read put a new thread in for that. But the rest I did a sky blue. 
because I thought, oh, if I have to change thread for every striation. And then, um, yeah, for the moon, I used a gray and a greenish gray. And that to try to give that, that color. But now what I'm going to do, so I've got to figure out how to hang it. One thing I saw is in one of these magazines, in the art quilt, quilting arts magazine, the woman did a bi tick, which is two pieces that make an art. She used netting between the two pieces to hang it. That's a great thought. So now what I'm going to do, uh, <laughs> so what I'm going to do, I'm thinking of getting a dowel rod and then putting a hanging sleeve along the back. But the thing that worries me is how do you hang it so that they'll be straight? So they won't get wonky. And I like the idea. I'm thinking of a very pale gray netting. So it kind of disappears because a white netting is going to show unless you put it on a white wall. And so I'm thinking gray. But please, I ask for you to share ideas of what you would do and how to hang it. Because I don't want to go around hanging it in three pieces all the time. That's going to drive me nuts. I want to put it as one. I want to leave enough space for you to see that it's triptychs. And I had to be real careful to make sure that all of my lines, all of my um, striation, sky striations matched. But, oh, I know what I was going to tell you. I really did a pretty sloppy job on this. And trying to figure out how to make cut the pieces to make, like this one is part blue, part orange. I did a pretty sloppy job. I was so, it was so many new techniques to do, to deal with. I did a pretty sloppy job. So what I did is where they didn't match up right, I came back with that color thread. Uh, fabric and I hand pieced applique over the boo boos. And so, this is not anything that would ever go in a show. This is just something to make me happy. I love the purple mountains down here, I think they're especially pretty because the, the sky right before the purple was yellow. But let me try to find some of the places. Oh my gosh, if you look at it up close, it's not as pretty. But see this right here. I had to add a piece of red fabric to bridge the gap because what I found is if there were too many uneven things, it looked terrible. Here's another, whoops, that piece and then that piece because when I put the rows together, the, the, it didn't line up correctly. I think if I had taken more time, it, it would have been better. Now, um, there are some places in the mountain that it doesn't quite line up. I left that because I said mountains are jaggy and craggy. That's okay. <laughs> so, and then I, the binding worked out really well. I would suggest I cut my binding out two and a half, which is what I do for everything. I ended up where when I hand sewed it on the back, I ended up folding under about an eighth of an inch because it was just too big. I didn't want it to be very big. So I would say two inches to two and a quarter max on your binding for a triptych. Unless you want, I didn't want, you don't want the binding to be so noticeable because you want, the neat thing about a triptych is noticing what, th what the three pieces have in common. A triptych just means an art in three pieces. And so I, I didn't want too thick of a binding because I wanted you to see the flow of the sky striations. Okay, thank you, Laura. And that, and so I just folded it under when I, and I was able to do, to, to tuck under the binding um, sitting on my comfy chair. Now, so what I showed you that I wasn't supposed to show you yet 
I said, I want to add a little something to the sun and the moon. And actually, I wanted to tell you, I used Angelina fibers. Angelina fibers. Now, Angelina fibers will melt to themselves. They don't melt to your fabric, anything. So the first piece I did, I had to iron up too hot and left it on too long. So it's kind of crackly. I don't like it that way. Oh, thank you, Joni. And what I did is I have a piece of gold lame upstairs. So I pulled threads off the gold lame so that the sun could have some golden sparkles too. So here I'll show you. This is the one I made to go on the moon. This is the one I made to go on the sun. So pulling out the gold lame threads, then the, the Angelina just fused them in. So this is what I'm going to do. Here is for the sun. And I'll make sure that all of the little threads get trapped in there. And I could use an invisible thread and go all over this. But what I think I'm going to do is cut a circle of netting. Oh, yeah, that's really pretty. It gives it a softness, a haziness. I'll cut a circle over the of netting out. And then, oh, thank you. Hi, Betty Meisner, hon. And I will then, with invisible thread, zigzag it around the edge. And that will hold the... Um, That'll hold the Angelina fibers in place. Let me get a light. So I want to show you how this really glistens. And Angelina fibers, they, I don't use them often, but when you do use them, hold on, let me get it in a different place. See how, see the glittery, if I get it just right, hold on. But you can see where it glitters. And whoops. And I need to hold it in place. So if you don't, you know, I, I'm I'm too afraid of sewing over it because I'm too afraid that my presser foot will get caught in all of the fibers. So by putting this over it, it gives it a little of a haze hazy look and it will hold the Angelina in place. So that's my idea for this. Let me show you the moon one, but I think that's kind of cool to give it a little bit of something special. Here is my moon. Here is my moon shimmer. Look at that. Isn't that cool? And it softens the thread painting. So that you get a hint of the thread painting. And I don't know if it matters one way or another. And then I will come with another round piece of netting for the moon. And it will give it a nice, nice, softened look. All right. And then it's just a matter of um, figuring out how to hang them up. And I want to hang them as one piece. But I like how it softens the thread painting. See that? Now, if you didn't want to use the thread painting to delineate the spots on the moon, you could use ink tints um, or very thin fabric paint. And so anyway, okay, that is that. Let me put all this over here and out of the way. And, but boy, I was very happy. Jody used this parchment paper and I was very happy with it. We're going to get ready and look at show and tell. And then we're going to come back and I'm going to start working on this pumpkin. And if I can find, if I can find the link for Craftsy, or you can go to Craftsy. National Sewing Circle, let me see, copyright, National Sewing Circle, National, uh, but I think you can type in craftsy.com and go to the fall handouts, so, and I had it last week on our chat, 
you know what I'll do is I'll look for it and put it in the information below. When I was cleaning up my room upstairs, I found this. And I think this is supposed to be something. And I don't, I'm not sure what it's used for. This, I wanted to ask y'all because it stayed in a baggie together. So obviously something I got. This is a little, it's a tiny little hook. Now, does that mean it's a crochet hook for crochet lace? I don't know. Then in the same little baggie is big honking needles called Best Needles. They're big. And then this. Now, I know I've seen things like this used to wrap your floss around, but would anybody have a guess of why this was in the same bag? Because I don't know. And I feel like it looks like I bought something that came with this. I, I don't know. And I would like to put it in. I try to keep all of my different crafts together so I can kind of make sense of them. But I don't know what this is. So, oh, also, if Debbie's still here, I need to get her new address because I've been meaning to send her something for so long. So, okay. Well, we've done really well. Boy. I talked fast. <laughs> Let's do our show and tell. And I have information about some of the pictures. Remember I told you last week or week before that Malcolm sent me a bunch of pictures. And they are from the Craft Istanbul 4th International Craft and Design Fair. So... Um, I've got a little information about a couple of the photos I'll show you. And I actually have a couple few photos. Oh, I know one thing I'm supposed to show you before we do, do show and tell. Okay. More netting, because, you know, you never have too much netting. Tool. Yeah, here's one that's already into a circle. I... I don't know who gave me these, but I can tell that somebody had used the netting to make like little rice bags or something because that circle was already made. Um, lemma, 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 lemma. This is all of my orange fabric for the pumpkin today. Here, 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 here. Okay, here are is my work. I only, like I told you, I'm sad to say I didn't get a lot done this week. I didn't feel good enough to sit at the sewing machine. And you have to, for so many things we make, you have to feel good enough for that. All right. But I did, before I started feeling too bad, I did start working. And because I'm working on, this is going to be my, um, my garland, my, my fall garland that I want to put on my mantle. So I did these and actually did a little sewing of the leaves. And because I'm going to do a little light sewing to give some definition. Then I took and cut a piece of the burlap and then just started laying them on coming and doing the blanket stitch from my sewing machine to sew these in place. Then when I take them off, I'm going to use my, I found and I actually bought another roll of twine. And so I'm going to sew them onto a piece of twine and then hang them on my mantle. So I want to get these done because if I was doing them for just Halloween, I'd have to take them down after next week. But luckily, I didn't make it Halloween-y because I'm smart enough to know it takes me too long. <laughs> and I want to be able to have it up for as long as possible. Sometimes when I do Christmas decorations now, I make them snow scenes so I can leave it up through February. 
So take them down only when Valentine's Day gets there. But so I'm getting smarter. So I just wanted to show you that I did have a little bit of time to work on that. And that was fun. I cannot bend down. Boy. Woo. Okay. Now let's go to show and tell. Let me turn off my light. And here we go. Okay. I love my computer stand and my arm. This is working out so much better. Now let's see what we've got. I think my folder is up first. I hope you won't mind if I show you mine first because I put it in an odd place and I'm afraid if I don't show you now, I'll never get back to it. Okay, this is what I showed you last week. This is, pardon me, this is Pilot Mountain. And I don't know if it actually qualifies as a mountain. But anyway, and it's just because of the stone. We have a lot of granite up that way. And the way the stone is, the rest kind of um, eroded off and left this granite uprising. And... This is in between Winston-Salem and Mount Airy, going north. And it's called Pilot Mountain because early, early days, whether it was Native Americans or early settlers, they use that as kind of a guide. So, and that's, I thought pilot meant something to do with modern planes, but pilot is an ancient word, meaning anything that shows the way. So here is my grandson's band. And they had another performance yesterday. And I, I wasn't able to get there. It was an hour and a half away. And of course, I just wasn't up to it. But they did really good. Okay. This is my loading the I quilted the triptych all at one time so I loaded the background on then here's my batting and then I laid each piece and lined them up I'll show you that and that way I could quilt then stop and start again and quilt and keep it in keep it all equal. So these, the quilting lines will match. So there are two of the pieces laying down there. And plus it just made it much easier to do them all at once. So I did a piece of fabric a few inches bigger. Same with batting and line them up. And I use a plastic tack system where it's tack gun, like you put tacks like you find on clothing. And I was able to keep it pretty close, but at least I could say if I had a line here, then I made sure it went over here at the same place. Okay. Let me see. Oh, same photo. Oh, blurry photo. Here is what it looked like on my frame. One, two, three. And this one. Oh, this is showing me I cut an extra piece to go behind the moon, a round piece to go behind the moon and behind the sun. That way it just gave them a little extra oomph and, whoops, and made them stand out from the background. Well, not all of my pictures were successful. This is my cart sideways, and that's my lamp. That's my floor. <laughs> And here, here's my, my stretched, it was a Janome 1600 in its former life, but now it's a stretched 16 inch machine. And I love it because it was only $1,800. And the frame, even if I were to get a different machine, I love this frame. I'll always have this frame. Okay. It was called a magic frame. Do you remember when I did this dahlia? 
well, yesterday my daughter came over and her birthday's coming up this next week. And I asked her, you see, I did the twine and put it on a natural stick to kind of have that natural look. I showed it to her and asked if she wanted it. And bless her soul, she said, yes. <laughs> so I was so happy, but she loves blue especially the color blue this is. So she sent me a picture this morning. Here's my, my grand dog, Polly. And let me enlarge this. She went and hung it on her wall. And I'm honored. It's right in her living room. So I'm so, so touched. And if you want to see one of my daughter Becky's talents, look at her plant room, otherwise known as the dining room. Does she grow the best plants or what? Isn't that amazing? So I absolutely love, love, love that. Um, my girl, both my daughters are kind of senti sentimental. These are antique chairs that I bought when I was 25 years old. And she still has them. And the table that went with it wasn't an antique. That's been gone, sold to someone else. But she, I love seeing little things that she remembers from growing up that she's held on to. So it made me very happy to see her hang that dahlia, the blue dahlia, hanging it up in her house. So I'm really, really happy. All righty. Now, I think that's it for my things. Let's go to yours. All righty. So Miss Anne has been so busy with her ink tents pencils. She is really doing a wonderful job of practicing with them. So I can't tell you how important this is because learning how to use any new tool, which is what it is, it's the tool in your toolbox, learning how to use any new tool takes practice so the the inspiration leaf is on the right and her drawing is on the left i love it so she has been doing oh wonderful wonderful things with her art and i'm so so tickled for her all right this is her this is the very same block that i did my triptych with and here is her end result. And so she's got the sun and the sky. And, oh, she just made a whole entire landscape out of placement of these blocks. I love it. Another one of her ink tents drawings. She's a very good artist. She's got a real feel for it. And she even put shadows in. I really love it. And a cute little bird she did. Isn't that cute? So she's a, she is, she has an innocence and an artistic talent that I think is a very nice combination. So I'm really proud of our Anne. And here, oops, nope, don't do that, Deb. Okay. So here is, I, now look how delicate. That's one thing I admire about her art. She's able to go bold and she's able to do a watercolor wash effect. Way to go. So I love, this is why I love when you send in pictures of your work because we learn from them. She's using this to make a bookmark. And I know you can buy um, sticky vinyl to like do a laminate of your own. That might be wonderful. And then I'm not sure. I think these are trees maybe. I'm not sure. But that is very pretty. And was that her last one? Let me see. That's not showing me. Yep, that was her last one for now. But wonderful job, Miss Anne. And uh, we love seeing your work. Okay, now Miss Betty. I I just love her beach scenes. She sent this in what three weeks ago, so we love to see this. 
And I love how alive her work is. It is wonderful. All the animals, her waves are amazing. And uh, I, I just love it. I love the wood on the beach. It's driftwood and her sea grasses. It's a lot of life there. And I love more than I can tell you when you bring your own personality into your work. It looks like she used um, fancy yarns to do her waves. Beautiful. We've come a long way with art quilting, I tell you. Betty Meisner. I love these two pieces. I love her sailing quilt. And look at this. Isn't that cute? A mystery novelist, a mystery sleuth. Isn't that precious? Look at the eyeballs here in the, in the trees. Oh, I love it. Okay. So thank you, Miss Batty. Anyone that would like to send their work to have a show, send it to Our Time to Quilt at TWC.com. We love it. All right. Let's see. And then, BB, I want to help me um, send good wishes to our BB. She's traveling over in the Middle East right now, and I want her to stay nice and safe. Here are some wonderful needlepoint works that Miss BB did as a teenager. And I think they showed a maturity beyond her years. Very talented. Very talented. Here is her lace tablecloth and then her beach quilt, which is just lovely. So travel safely, Miss BB. So my heart breaks for people who are suffering over in parts of the Middle East. Miss Bonnie, to show that she what she got done for September. I love Miss Bonnie, even though she's retired. She still sets goals for herself. So she finished her table runner and then two blocks for a block of the month she's working on. But way to go, Miss Bonnie. Now, Debbie, let's see. Yes, Debbie's beach quilt is exceptional. I love that. Okay. And then I love this one and her tropical quilt. And then, oh, look at this autumn quilt. Doesn't that just pop? That is wonderful. Makes me want a pumpkin pie. I think I need to make a pumpkin pie. And then, oh, look at this. That is so cute. And I love the flange. You see, she's got a flange in here. I love that. Way to go. All right. Now, let's see who is next. Our Diana. Oh, this is her artwork she made for her son. And oh, my gosh, it's so beautiful. That has a dreamy quality. I just love it. Look at how... Part painting. I mean, it's just so talented. Very artistic. Look at that. Looks like it's done on canvas. Mm. Beautiful. Beautiful, Diana. If he doesn't love it, I'm coming to get it. <laughs> the, look at it. Isn't that beautiful? And, you know, anything that blue looks so much like indigo. And I just think it is gorgeous. And I love Queen Anne's lace too. That's beautiful. Dolores. Oh my goodness. Dolores is a professional artist, as you know, and come on, come on. And oh, look at these. I don't know if she did these on commission or what. But she uses the filene thread that makes look so much like fur. But look at all of her delicate stitching. Look at those magnificent eyes of that cat. 
the whiskers. I'd love to know how does she do the whiskers. They're beautiful. So very talented lady, our Dolores. Now she oh, I gotta tell you this funny story. So she wrote and told me her grand she had to be cleaning up her room, her craft room, because her grandson last time said, who likes to come sew with her, said, Your room, your craft room is so messy, it's hard to work in. <laughs> So what are you going to do with teenagers? Doesn't he know that a messy room is a sign of a very busy artist? <laughs> but look at the tufts. See the tufts? Look at the ears, the tufts of thread that look like fur, the fibers that she included in this long-haired cat. And her the eyes of the cat are, are just wonderful. So she's an amazing artist. And then these were her small three inch mini artworks that she sold at an art fair and had them all on little easels and i just think they're precious they are so cute look at that fox oh look at that bear and all of that thread work that was that's a, these are works of love even that possum is cute so see how she put it on a little easel and sold them that way. And I think they're adorable. Oh, look at that goldfish. I love how she signs her work. That's a manatee. Love how she signs her work because you know what? Our works deserve our signature. Tell the world who we are. And then Miss Jody sent, are you ready for, you know that I love Miss Jody's work. And she has things like King Kong here, who's just beautiful. And her Chrysler building down here, which is amazing. So look at what she did. She said she can vouch that Bigfoot has been sighted. <laughs> is that the cutest thing? I love it. And she said this fabric. I'm trying to, I don't remember the name she said of it, but that's one piece of fabric. So it, it's like ombres down. I'm sure that when she cut it, you know, but it's so nice to have one fabric that can give you all those different shades of those trees. So I think that, and she even cut his face, um, the piece of fabric to guide, kind of give him some facial features. And I don't know. Oh, I see how she did. Yes, yeah, she did. It looks like the fur comes. The way the way the batik, she cut it so it was dark there for features and fur coming out. That is so cute. So thank you, Miss Jody. And congratulations again on one year. Oh man. I know there were times you thought, would a year ever come? And it did. Yay. That is behind you now. Okay. Miss Joni sent me some of her work, which we love. This Joshua tree, I think the family went there. And it was to commemorate an event someplace they love. And then look at this wonderful Dahlia, a Dresden plate Dahlia. I love that. And here is her fabric roping. And <clears throat> she made the spools that it's wound on. This is a, either a toilet paper or a paper towel roll with paper coasters that she had collected. Glued them together to make the spools to wind her handmade <coughs> fabric rope on. Here are some wonderful totes she made for her grandsons for Halloween. Isn't she the best? There is her. Bar Jello. Mm, pardon me. And back to the Joshua tree. I love the quilting. And look how she showed the prickly cactus. Look how she showed the difference in the landscape from the ground to the mountains and the shade. She, her quilting set it off. 
beautiful. So you can take a panel and do a lot with it. All right. Now we're going to go to, let's see. Miss Mary. Miss Mary did the cutest thing. She was excited because a partial um, eclipse came and she wanted to show you. You think, well, what does that have to do with an eclipse? What it is, is she watches the eclipse through her, her mother's or grandmother's colander. You know, the old colanders, the drainers, and you can see the effects of the eclipse through that. I thought, what a creative idea. Our Mary is so creative. And here is a wonderful quilt of hers. Oh, this is her label. Love that she does labels. Look at her um, Civil War diary quilt. Absolutely wonderful. And then her first ever quilt, which just boggles my mind, my brain. And look at that. Isn't that amazing? And I do believe she hand quilted it all. So our Miss Mary's got gumption, I tell you what, and a good eye. So now let's see. And I love that idea. I think this coming up April, we're going to have a total eclipse that will be seen from North America. So remember that April 9th, 2024, we're going to have an eclipse, which I'm excited. I want to see one. Now I have a folder from Marsha Han. And here is her bed runner, which I've been showing you, but I've got something new. Love this bed runner. Perfect fall colors. Her, her elderly but sweetheart dog with the coat she made. Look at her. I thought of doing the garland after seeing this. It is so cute. So I really love what she did. And I'm going to make sure that I get mine done and put up. Isn't that just lovely? She's got a, a good eye for decoration. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And stitching, the raffia, the button, a lot of care. Here's another decoration. She, she made the bunnies by hand. She did painted the mini gourds. Here is a cute, cute fall quilt. I love it. And I love how she quilted it to show the leaves falling. This was a panel that she quilted and put together. I think it is gorgeous. And I love all of her dog bone or random quilting. Very nice choice. And then she made these leaves, these wool leaves, and put magnets in them so they can stick to her metal door. Is that creative or what? And a wonderful display in her house with a birdhouse and then that lovely quilted piece down there. So what an eye. I love her home decor. I love her crafting. And I loved that joy of life she shows in her home decorating. Very pretty. Very pretty. All right. Now let's go back. And do, do, do. oh, I gotta look, I've got to look at this, Miss Lisa. Miss Lisa and I are gonna be working on an Alaska quilt. Oh, I can't wait, can't wait. Although I think Miss Lisa's is going to be more traditional right along this line. And that is going to be exquisite. And I'm still working on my colors, but mm, I can't wait. Let's cross our fingers. We're getting ready for that. Then Miss Meltem in Turkey. Okay. Now what I wanted to show you, I wish this thing had a slideshow. I don't, let me see, under options. To view, let's see. I don't see. I used to have a slideshow, but mm -mm -mm. 
All right. Well, I'll go ahead and cancel this. I don't want to mess up something I shouldn't. Um, let me see. Let me see. No. Oh, well. It would have been very nice. Okay. So let me start this, these pictures. This, these pictures were taken by our wonderful Malcolm from Turkey. And she went to the Craft Istanbul 4th International Craft and Design Fair. And she was so kind to download all of these for us to, to look at. And I am so glad she did. There are some beautiful works in this. This statue, this is Sister Sharif. And I apologize if I'm not pronouncing it correctly. Because this is important. And they have Kastamanu and Turkey Festivals. And she is, our Meltem is from Kastamanu, a province of Turkey. There was a statue of Sister Sharif. You can see this statue in many districts of Kastamanu because she's a heroic woman who is the symbol of her Kastamanu province. She took the blanket from her on baby, for her own baby, and covered the ammunition. A hero who considers her homeland more valuable than her child because if the homeland were gone, everything would be over. So Sharif Bachi Baki, Sister Sharif, lived from 1900 Kastamanu to 1921 in Kastamanu, Turkish heroine of the Turkish Wars of Independence. As a result of his struggle with the old woman and men from Kastamanu to take the ammunition from them to Ankara, he froze to death in December 1921 at the age of 21 due to harsh winter conditions. Oh, I think this is, she means the Sister Sharif. She covered her sweater over the ammunition to prevent it from getting wet and leaned on it to prevent her baby from dying. And as a result, she froze to death. So I just thought that, and evidently she's very much honored in that region. And so that, that I wanted to make sure I told you that because that's important. All right. Here is some more gorgeous. Here's some wood carving. Look at these glass hummingbirds. Beautiful. Okay. Ah, look at this chenille. Oh, that's beautiful. Printed artworks. Just let me... And this is Bargello. This is more of the original. It's called the Flame Stitch. And now you can see why we make the Bargello quilts like we do. It first came to needlework. Look at some of these beautiful works. Hmm. I am so tickled that she shared this with us. It's like traveling without leaving home. And it's inspiring. Just beautiful. Look at the stamps. Oh. Look at the hand printed fabric. Painted skulls. Is that amazing? Art is such an amazing thing. It brings peoples together. It teaches. It's the expression of people's souls. We're so lucky to be able to share art with the world. Isn't that amazing? Oh, my goodness. Look at these painted rope hangings. Isn't that amazing? Art comes in more forms than we could ever list. 
These look like woven rugs. Mm, they're beautiful. Look at that needlework. Mm. Reminds me of punch needlework. In fact, I have some of that. I need to look into doing more of that. Oh, that! look at that rug. Mm. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, beautiful weaving. Michelangelo, I love it. Mm -mm -mm. Look at that. So the Turkish weaving is very important, you can tell. That is amazing. Mm. Isn't this just magnificent? Oh my goodness. And that is string art where you you put nails for the outline of the design and then between the nails you wind the string back and forth. That is amazing. And these are dolls that are dressed in traditional Turkish uh, clothing. Oh, that's gorgeous. But I love all of this. And this is what makes life fun and interesting and ce a celebration. Artwork is so very important. Mm, that is so neat. These are all hand arts. Beautiful. Look at that traditional outfit. Wow. I love the colors. It, it's just they wrap around and celebrate the colors. More of the string nail art. Mm. Isn't that beautiful? Ah, see, save your denims. Look at that. Ah, look here, here we have Sashiko. Beautiful Sashiko. Oh, look at the dervishes. They're beautiful. Look at the rugs. Oh, my. These are crocheted toys. They're so cute. Look at all of that embellishment on the scarves. Mm. Just beautiful. Look at these dolls in traditional Turkish wear. Turkey's been around a long time, and the amazing breadth of color and expression, texture, just amazing. Mm, look at that. Even quilts. They do it all. Look at this felting. Ooh, I love these dolls. They're so cute. Pottery, furniture. Mm. Here's a woman weaving a rug. It's so beautiful, so complex. I, I just, I, I'm amazed watching her. I was like, I want to do that. But how many years did it take her to become that good at weaving amazing rugs? Okay, we want to think of our Michelle, who's undergoing medical treatments, and we love her and hope she's back soon. And let me see. SJ, oh yeah, let's let's visit our SJ again.
because she sent us this beautiful pictures of this castle. And it was, am I remembering right that it's a Scottish castle? I'm not sure. I forgot now. There was a name for it, but I forgot. But, oh, look at the stained glass. And remember, some of these are like a thousand years old. And it's just amazing to look at the tapestries, to look at the glass work, the, the, the plaster work. Look at that rug. Just absolutely gorgeous work. Ceiling on that castle is amazing. Mm. Oh, I know. This is a Rundle castle. This is a Rundle castle. I had to remember. We have in Mar when I lived in Maryland, we have Anna Rundle, which she was the queen, and. So, oh, this is the floating, it's floating on water, the floating crown above the grotto of this castle. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Mm -mm -mm. And I think she said that this tower is 130 some steps up, but it gives a wonderful vantage point. To protect the castle from enemies. And she walked up all those stairs just to see the view. So way to go, Miss SJ. We're thinking of you, wishing you well. We'd love any pictures you'd love to send. It's amazing. Oh, in fact, here's the grotto. And right above this is, this must be the source of water for this fountain that holds up the crown. So... Just think of that. We have been, we've had a little tour of England, a little tour of Turkey. We see some amazing things here, don't we? Okay. So now let's come back and thank you everyone who made that possible by sending me photos of your work, things you love, your homeland. We love it all. And, oh, it, it, we all bring something to the table. We value each and every one of you. We value your faith, your traditions, your arts. It's, it makes the world go round and a much more interesting place to live. I can tell you that much. So thank you so much. <clears throat> Gosh, every time we do a show and tell, it just... I get goosebumps. So <laughs> thank you. And I'm going to write down right here. <coughs> pardon me. Um, if you want to, our time to quilt at pwc.com. You can send pictures of your garden or your quilts or whatever makes you you happy. And if you'd like to join our groups IO where I keep files for all of my patterns, they're all free. Anything we make on here is free and, um, and links to fun things and free patterns and all of that. So here is the background that I'm going to put my fall pillow. I'm going to make my fall pillow on this. This is all I had left of this, but I feel like I'll probably use this pumpkin colored fabric for the backing and that will work just dandy. All right. So I'm going to sit that there and then I'm going to take out a handful of fabrics and I'll see how long I last. I got a little dizzy a few times with the photos, but as of right now, I'm feeling pretty good. So I think that uh, I'm going to give it a shot. So all of lately, I have been dealing with scraps, scraps, and more scraps by working on, by working, oops, I don't have it up. I forgot to put it up. By working on 
the triptych, I have lots and lots of scraps. So here is, it's called Autumn Mix and Match Table Runner Pumpkin. I'm just doing the pumpkin. And I'm going to put the pumpkin on a pillow. So here are my patterns. And I had to go and make extra copies. Hopefully I have the extra. Yep. Because one of the things here is, okay, here's the diagram. And if you follow the link, then you can get your own copy. And it says here, nationalquilterscircle.com, nationalquilterscircle.com. But I think I just typed into... Maybe it was nationalquiltercircle.com and then look for the free handouts. And you might have to sign up with your email and then you can download the pattern. All right. So F1, F1. Yep. Let me grab my paper scissors here. And if you, what are, hmm, what are, oh, the pumpkins. If it's these that you're talking about, last year, I made these, and it was so easy. I took grocery bag, and I filled one grocery bag with the others. I filled them full, and then used that, and I used um, paper towels. I used brown paper, paper. I didn't have enough brown paper to do it all, but this year I have more. You can see I signed it. And but I took a grocery bag full of other grocery bags, chocked full and tied it into a knot. And then I took a glue mixture and you can even add a little flour if you want to the glue. And I dipped the strips of paper into this. So I think I did some of this on a Sunday Live a year ago. So you should be able to look it back up. And then I just formed it over the plastic bag and made sure that I had some indentations in it. And it, it, I, I thought it was going to turn out smoother. And, uh, and it kind of turned out a little bit frumpy lumpy. But I love them. And I then painted it orange once they dried. And I was able to, I think I took out the plastic bags that were inside. But I used the, past, the, the part of the plastic bag that I tied into a knot. I used that, covered it with paper towels in that glue mixture to make the stem. Then I painted them. I put the little indentation lines on them and then sealed them. And they did perfectly in the attic. Nothing tried to eat them. <laughs> I was so tickled. And this is one of the blue pumpkins. And I had the best time making these. In fact, my daughter said, oh, next year I want to learn. So I'm going to have to teach her that. And then I did this one. So aren't they cool? And I just made them with glue, flour, and nothing, a naked plastic bag pumpkin oh but you saved it so yep and what fun what fun and and it's just like child's play but i get such a kick out of them so i tell you what i'm having all kinds of fun anytime i go searching for stuff to do with y'all i'm having so much fun now for this pumpkin I only have to cut out the strips that have pieces. This is for a fabric strip to go on either side of the pumpkin. Well, I'm just putting it on a pillow, so I don't need that. All right, so cut those two pieces out. And then I have three pieces on this one. And it's just simple paper piecing. And I'll... 
pick out what colors. Yeah, this has the other side strip. Don't need that. Okay. Because what I'm going to do is just make the components of the pumpkin and then put that right on the pillow. So here these are. I cut them out. I'm going to save this. This is the one that gives me the layout of these. So the strips that I'm going to be piecing like that, evidently, aha, uh -huh. let me see. I don't know, but I will figure it out. I will figure it out. All right. So cut a piece of fabric large enough to cover the section A1 with at least a quarter of an inch of, of fabric extending beyond this, this seam. So it's pretty much just paper piecing. Okay. All right. I think we got this. So now... I'm going to keep this page close by, and I've got my fabric right here. Let me bring the camera down. You can ask any questions if you want, comment on anything, but I'm bringing over all my colors. This is left over from a Bargello that I took apart, so I've got all kinds of things. So, now, ah, okay, B3, I don't need, B7, I don't need. In fact, let me do something so I'll remember this, because I'm putting it on a pillow. So, I don't need this, I don't need that. I don't need this, I don't need that. Don't need this, don't need that. Don't need this, don't need that. <laughs> And when it actually comes to the pillow, don't need this, don't need that. Okay. And what I'm going to do, since I'm going to put it on a pillow, instead of having just this, I'm going to go ahead and cut out uh, more of an old leaf. So, and let me make sure that my I got the comments down to the bottom. Yes, Debbie, you're right. There's so many talented ladies in this group. We're so, so lucky. Okay, so now I'm going to get two stem colors. And I love using these scraps because lately I've been the scrap queen. So I'm going to pull out a good size piece of this brown. Let me get, I forgot, I've got to bring my iron over and get that heated up because it just makes it so much nicer to, as you paper piece to show, hold on, let me see if I can find, ah, uh, here's one. It's a little bit bigger until I cut it down. Well, I don't need it that big. This will work. I just had to pull it apart. All right, I'm going to quickly press these pieces. It always helps to have... It always helps to have the pieces um, pressed so that when you work on sewing them together. Okay. Mm. Mark was trying to help me. There's a thing you can do by falling backwards on the bed with your head lower to try to get the... Ah, I'm going to use this one to try to get that ear crystal back in place to stop the vertigo. And, um, okay, let me see, just to make sure, is this on here? B1 and B2. Yes, it's right here. But I don't need the rest of this. So I don't need this whole piece right here. So I just put B1 on the top which is this one, and B2 down here. All right. So this is nice and easy. It's gonna, I'm going to lower my stitch length because anytime you're sewing smaller pieces, shorten that stitch length up. You'll be much happier. All right. I'm definitely going to make the outside pieces a little bigger. 
because I'm going to want to now. So here are the two pieces. And here is the pattern. Oops. Okay. Whoops. Got it the wrong way. Okay. So here is this. I'll cut it off with a quarter of an inch left. And then this one, trim it up. Okay, here we go. And remember, this is for fun. So this doesn't have to be perfect in any stretch of the imagination. Trim it off up here. And then we get a blue little blue stick and let's see and then that way I can press this in here let me give it a little press I want to go ahead and turn in my edges and okay and that glue oh I have been watching this glue is a little dried up I might have to rehydrate it. Sometimes I rehydrate my glue sticks. I take and put a little, a little bit of warm water in the cap and then just a little bit and then put it back together. And um, you can get some more use out of them. Otherwise, I would keep them in a plastic baggie so that they will not dry up as fast. Okay, so here is my stem. Let me give it another little press. All right, so I have the first part. And since I'm not going to use the leaf in this, then this is done. All right, so I've done B. Now this is, so here is the first part of this. Actually, it goes like that. Here, the next row is the C row, and here is my C row. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this piece of fabric on first, just like, hi, Meltem. Uh, well, you know, Meltem, um, we showed all your pictures today, and I wrote down the information you gave me. So you may wish to watch that part later again. Make sure I got my information correct, because it was just so amazing and touching, and just beautiful. And we want to thank you, Meltem, for taking the time to not only take the photos, but to send them, that was a lot of time for you to download them and send them to me. So thank you so much for caring. We love seeing all of your homes and your, your traditions. We love that. All right. Let me. I'm going to see how quickly I can do this too. Oh. I have got more dried up glue sticks around. Okay. I'm going to put a little water in this cap because it does work, but not as well as I would like it to. Okay. So I just take a little bit of water and put it in here. And then when I take it in and out, it'll soften up some of the glue. All right. So I need... This, aha, uh -huh, okay. But this is important. This first batch, it goes right across here. Oh, and it's important to mark what pieces I don't need. I don't need that one. I don't need this one. Okay, so we're just going to do these few pieces. All right. I think this would be a gorgeous color for the center stripe. Okay. So I'm cutting out a piece bigger than I need. All right. I'm going to do it on this side like we do regular paper piecing. I'm going to put glue on the first one to hold it in place. 
right. Making sure, and that's why I fold, I fold the, the pattern because then I can see if I've got the fabric in the right place. The glue might not be sticking good, so I'm going to stick a pin right in here. So now, this is going to be my center stripe. I'm going to do like they did and use lighter colors on these outer stripes. So I think this is going to be my next fabric. And I'll put it... What I've got to do with paper piecing, you fold back on the line where the next piece is going to butt up. You take your scissors and you trim to a nice quarter of an inch or just less. Okay, then when you put the paper back, you know exactly how to line up your fabric. I'm going to come in. I don't know if I want to go to yellow. Let me look again. Ooh, this might be a real good one. Okay, so I line this up here, and what you do is you fold backwards to make sure you have enough fabric. I have my stitch length down to 1.9, something like that, 1.8, and then I'm going to sew this piece on. All right, take out this pin and give it a press. All right, now I come fold this back where I'm going to put the next piece of fabric and I cut it to within an inch of the fold of paper. Trim off the excess here. All right, and then my next one, I'm going to choose a nice deep orange. A rusty orange. All right. And I line this up here. And then I fold it back like this to make sure I have enough fabric. And I do. So I'm going to take it over here and sew on that next line. So it's putting the, paper, the fabric right sides together, stitching with a smaller stitch, then folding it back. This is going to be really pretty. And, oh, good. I just do have the right amount. Okay, so now I'm going to come here, and I'm going to cut off at least a, qu at least a quarter of an inch beyond that last piece of fabric. Okay? So now this is going to be this rose color. This is the middle rose color. And I can always add other things. This one might be the far sides color. That's cool. And, oh, that's wonderful for the next light color. Let me give it a quick little press. But, you know, the thing I love about making holiday decorations, they take a little bit of time but then you have them for the rest of your life and or you give them to your kids and grandkids and they have them. So I, I love it. If you make a, a couple a year, it won't it won't take long before you've got a huge collection to decorate with every year. And I, I've learned with age to keep them segregated in their own packaging, pat, you know, whether you put them in big bags or tote, so that it's easy to reach them, pull them down, and decorate. If I have to go through too much work, the older I get, the less I want to spend that much energy. And be careful on this because it is going to kind of go up a little. With this curve, you've got to put your fabric in place so that you have enough. It'll go up, the, you know, around that whole piece. Oh, this is going to be really cute. I like this. And, you know, you could do a pillow out of the blue and gray shades like those great, wonderful new pumpkins look. All right. So now I only have one more color to put on this whole swath. This is going to be very fast to make. 
Okay. Now, I like things bright, so I'm going to go ahead and add this here. Turn it over and stitch down this line. Right. Yeah. I'm going to, whoops, I left a little bit much fabric right here, so I'll trim this off pretty quickly. Press this, and then let me grab a small cutting mat so I can trim this up. Because again, it's really going to be beautiful. All right, let me give this a quick little press. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is I, well, I need it a quarter of an inch beyond the line. Okay, whoops. Okay, quarter of an inch beyond the line. Okay. that so I can do it for the next one and then I'll be very careful do not want to cut my fingers I'm going to do along this exterior line here across the top that is awesome and I'm going to show you what it's going to look like. Here is the fabric. And, oh, that is so cute. That is so cute. Before I sew it on the pillow, I'm going to take the paper off of it, though. So we got the first one. Now I need the second strip. And that is section D. And then we'll just have this section down here. And I need to mark this because you don't need this section. So I just have a few more pieces to go, and I'm going to show you a, an adorable pumpkin. Thank you, Craftsy and the National Quilt, National Quilter Circle. This is a lot of fun, and we appreciate your work. All right, so my center fabric is this one. I'm bringing this one right back. And, whoops, I forgot to fold it on the line so I can see. Yeah, I don't like this vertigo. It's making me feel pretty awful. All right. Okay, here we go. Luckily, vertigo, for the most part, is not a problem. It's usually, you know, an inner ear problem. I had a doctor tell me some years ago that I had incompetent eustachian tubes. Ha! Huh, how dare him? <laughs> but, yep, I do. I've had ear problems since I was a child. And, uh... Okay. I used to have terrible, terrible earaches. Oh, my gosh. So, and then I now have, I'm hard of hearing. So, you know, you got to do what you got to do. We all, we know, I told my son that nobody gets through the life, through life in perfect condition. Just not the way it works. All right. So now the next piece I'm going to add I come, and since I've got this rotary cutter, I'll just cut that off approximately a quarter of an inch. I'll come and fold it back this way. And that one looks much better, but I'll just trim up a little bit here. This is so, when you do this trimming, it's because then you know right where to place your next fabric. All right, put that back in the middle to remember that that's my middle fabric, okay? So then, okay, my next fabric goes here. Hmm, let me get out that piece again, make sure I've got it lined up right. Oh, yes, the cute little curly Q fabric. Where did that go?
I will find it. There. I don't think that's big enough, but I know I had. Yeah, ha! Here it is. Good thing, because I don't know. I'll have just enough, I think. Let's see. Oh, all right. This one's. Let me peek if there's anything else. Hmm. It's always good to make sure you have enough of that fabric. <laughs> Let me see. I know what I'm going to do because I want to say use the same fabric. So give me just a moment. I'm going to make this work. That's what it's about, making it work. All right. I'm going to just stitch these together so I know I've got enough. Press it really good. And cut the right size. Okay, come up here. Cut it. All right. So now come in here. And it's this one. Lay this right here. Fold this back, making sure I've got enough. And I do. And I'll give this a tiny little, oops, do it on the side with the lines to make sure you sew it in the correct place. Ouch, that pen got me. It got me. Oh, I tried to watch Halloween, the first Halloween movie with uh, Jamie Lee Curtis yesterday. I haven't gotten all of the way to the end of it yet. I'll, I'm not sure you know, how I'll do. But too funny. All right, so now this is going to go this way. Press it. But how cute. Now this wonderful rusty orange. First, I've got to pull this back and cut off the extra. I'll save that part for later. Quarter of an inch. Okay. And you know what I thought? If I don't have enough of this fabric for the very bottom, I'll consider it a shadow and I'll use another, a darker color. So I'm going to make it work. All right. Now I use my wonderful rust. I'm in here and put this on. Flip it over. Sew on the line. You know what I just thought of? I'm going to get a piece of my green wool and I'm going to make a pumpkin leaf and I'm going to have it only partially attached to the pillow. So like it will stick out a little. I think that would be neat. Okay. So here is the last piece on this side. I'm just going to cut it. Whoops. Yeah. Cut it here. Because this already has a built-in quarter of an inch. Because all of these are going to be ironed under. So, and don't worry about this showing. As you see, I've got plenty of leftover space. All right, now I need to find some of uh, that piece of wonderful orangey brown. Here it is. This is for the other side. So this is going to fit right here. Put right sides together. Let me use this end so it's wide enough. All right. Match that up. Yep. Okay. And then, whoop, stitch. <laughs> I See, I have been doing this for how many years? Probably 15 years. And I still have to remind myself walk myself through it because it's it feels backwards but it's a wonderful way to get a very neat and tidy and consistent well now so now i'm going to fold this back right here and cut the fabric loose leaving a quarter of an inch 
beyond the folded paper. Okay, and then my final color, which is this wonderful bright, this one. Oh, that is great. I love that fabric. That's a Jenny Byer, believe it or not. I know you're not surprised. Okay, put this. And I, yeah, I want to have the orange part. So at least you don't see as much of the red and purple, but you see the orange. So I'm going to line that up like that. Stitch that on. Then I just have this one, these last few little pieces. And then I will have a pumpkin. Yay. But I miss you guys terribly. Thank you for giving me the time I needed to feel better. I really appreciate it. And, uh, I'm not used to having bugs like that because I don't go out that all that much. But when you get one, you get one. So that's why I'm going to be glad to um, get that flu shot and my next COVID. Oh, poor Stephen. Um, I love Stephen. Oh, what's his name? Colbert. We were watching his show. And he talked about feeling really poorly. He tested positive for COVID. And evidently, he said his throat is, is just painfully burning, really hurting. And, you know, I know he's had immunizations. So we're going to make sure to get the latest and greatest one it's just supposedly come out. We're going to double check on that. But. I don't want to get COVID and be hurting like that. All right. Cutting this off along this outer line. Trimming this edge off here. All right. Here is, whoops, that does look a little short. Okay. If that's going to end up being a little short and giving you trouble, this is the perfect time to take care of that. Um, I think I can work around. You could take, and yep, yeah, I just pulled it up. You can pull this up, okay? This, this is good. I'll show you how to fix this. I thought I had it enough, and I guess I didn't. So you take this same fabric. You put it along here. There, matching that whole thing. And then on the top of this, so I can see where I'm stitching, I'm going to stitch just from that seam to the next one. Stay near the edge, have nice short stitches, and right near the edge, give it a stitch. Okay. Now, then put it here. Trim off the excess. All right, let me press it. Now, where I pulled that other fabric back, you can't sew it the exact way that it would, would have been sewn the first time, but it will, the seam allowance is going to catch it. Okay, and if you ever worried, you could always come in with invisible stitches by hand and kind of stitch it down again. But this is going to be this way. So let's see what that's going to look like. Match up your seams by putting a pin right there, right where those lines meet, and putting it through this one right where those lines meet. There we go, like this. When you hold the needle and it is perfectly perpendicular, like that, then come in here with another pin or two and place it. Then you can take that pin out, come over and put it right here at the cross point of this one, then come through over here, put it at the cross point of that one, Move the fabric until the pin is perfectly perpendicular. Stick in another pin. And off you go to the next one. This is the best way to make sure that you've got your seams lined up. OK. 
Okay, because if the seam wasn't lined up, the pin would turn. See, if I push it. So if the pin's perfectly straight, you know your seams are perfectly lined up. And sometimes if it's something really important, I'll put a pin on either side of this one. Then use this, go to the next one down, put a pin through that intersection, put a pin through this intersection, make sure they're that pen is perfectly perpendicular, then drop a pen in here. Now, let's get ready and sew that. And let's see how we did. Let's see if that worked. It might not be absolutely perfect because I didn't put two pens, but I think it'll work. All right, and I still have that shorter stitch, but that's good because, like I say, anytime you're sewing little pieces together, give it the extra oomph. And there we are. Isn't that, isn't that wonderful? So let me press it, and I'll be right back. But that is the way. If you have to have your seams meet, that's the way to do it. Okay. So here is my pumpkin, and somewhere, this is my last page right here, but I love this. This is really cute, and how easy is this? And somewhere in all of this, I have my little stem. Oh, if I've lost it, I'll make another one, but normally you wouldn't sew with all this mess here. <laughs> okay, so now my last piece. I'm going to get my nice bright orange and I'm going to cut a piece of that and I'm going to overcut it. The one problem I have had when I have done paper piecing in the past is I am too frugal with my fabric. I end up not putting enough there. And if I don't put enough, then, oops, let me go ahead and fold lines. If I don't put enough fabric and it ends up short, then I hate it. So, but I've shown you what to do if you end up a little short. Just tack that extra piece in. And as you can see, it's nice and sturdy now. If this were a show quilt, then I would replace the whole piece. But this is not. This is just fun. And I learned something many years ago. I had a friend who was a perfectionist, and she would make her daughter clothes. She took forever to make it. Then there was another woman friend. We both belonged in the same kind of sewing group. And the other one just kind of slapped stuff together much faster. And it still fit, and it held up. She said to me, Deb, these kids are going to grow out of this so fast. There's no sense in trying to make everything perfect. And then I saw what she did. Like her one child was Aaron with an E. She put an elephant on it for the child's name, Aaron. I thought that was so cute. So I said, hmm, would I rather do it perfect and take forever to get it? Or would I rather put some fun into it and get it on the child so they have time to wear it before they grow out of it. And I learned a lot. There's little ways like that that you can learn along the way. Okay, now this is where I might have a problem finding that swirly. So I've got this little piece. I don't know if I have that swirly. So what I'll do that when you do this, go a slight shade darker. Don't go lighter because lighter will make it really stand out. So let me see. Let me see. Huh. Now I know if I went over there and pulled out all of my scrap fabrics so that I could find that exact fabric. But like I said. This is not that important. And this will be uh, all I can find right now is this. 
And let me see the piece I need. I need this size. I could piece it together. Oh, what the heck, I'll do it. Okay. One time I couldn't find fabric to finish a quilt. And so I looked online. No, no. What did I do? I guess I did. It was a while ago, though, long 20 years ago. I finally found some fabric, but the shipping was going to be more expensive than the little bit of fabric I needed. So I took some fabric that was close to it and lightly bleached it and then washed it really, really good several times after that so that the color was a pretty good match. And I that's what I used. And you know what? Nobody. Oh, you didn't see it? Okay, Lisa. Let me... Let me do something. I, I want you all to be able to do this. So let me find it. I know I've got it in my files. I tell you what. I will, as soon as the show's over, I will find it. I will put it in the information. Because this, I, I thought I found it on Craftsy anyway. So, but I will find it. I will put it in the thing. Okay. But I will put it in there because I want you to, this is just too cute for you not to have. But I will definitely get it. I will put it right below this as soon as I get off of here. Okay, I'm going to put this piece right here. Now, I recommend when you go to put your fabric, especially if you're not talking, Take the time to make sure you've got, this is not requiring that much fabric. Take the time to, to make sure you've got enough fabric. Okay. So here is my cobbled together pieces. I always tell myself that I'm just being frugal like my great grandmother would have if she were making a quilt. So, okay, I'm going to put this here and fold it back to see. Yep. I just will have enough. This is a little bit of paper piecing mixed with crumb quilting. <laughs> and there's a little part of me who absolutely loves making do. There's that pioneer spirit in me that says, I can figure it out. And... Uh, Crazy, I know, I know, I know. Okay, so it's just enough. Yay. Just, look at that. Just enough. So I'm going to now cut it at a quarter of an inch so I can put my next piece on. And I get to put that amazing rusty orange on. Okay. Need a nice straight piece that I know will be enough. Okay, now I'm going to give it a press. Okay, cut the excess off real quick. Now I'm done with this piece, so I can toss it aside. Trim. Push off. This off. Okay. Put these aside. So now I've got these three pieces. This is going to be okay because I've got extra. See how I have extra paper? And by the time I fold it under, look, it's just going to catch it. So even though it's a little short, it's not bad. No problem. All right. Now, that black thread is right there. Okay. Get off my stray threads. Want it pretty. All right, now I'm going to go to this color right here. And then the last one will be that really bright, happy color. So I only have two more pieces left to sew, and we've got a pumpkin. Okay. Okay. 
right. Give this a press. Let me make sure. Oh, nope. This one, I, with it the way it's curving, it's not quite going to fit. So what I'm doing is carefully cutting the stitches here to take this piece off and sew it in a better position. All right. So now, this is why I try to remember to line up the fabric. Actually, I'm going to do it this way because I know I can't run out of it this way. You turn it back along that line and see how when, since it's on an angle, but now I know I've got enough. So come back and stitch this down. Right? And I like to, I don't like to leave a whole lot of fabric in the seam allowance. Trim that up. And then one last piece and we have it. Okay. So now what I'm going to do though, for the last time is fold this back and trim it. Leave a quarter of an inch all the way down that then flip it back over and now stitch this on and don't be selfish because I hate spending the time to have to take it out and do it again I'd rather waste a touch of fabric than do that all right so now I'm gonna line it up and then see if I hadn't have put the fabric so far down here when it turned that's what it would have done Right, and then stitch along that line. Okay. All right. Now, okay, let me give this a good press and then I'll trim it up and I will be done. Okay. Since I've got my rotary cutter here, I'm going to go ahead and do it with that. And I would recommend you use a ruler when you're using the rotary cutter to protect your hands. So, okay. Now, I'm going to put this onto here. And let's, oh, one thing I have to do. I have to trim this off a quarter of an inch because I don't need either of these little triangles. That was supposed to be background if I was going to make it into a little table runner or whatever. So now, all right, so I'm going to show you that one more time. How do you get the perfect, how do you get the perfect matching of the seams? You take the pin, you stick it in that intersection right there, okay? Then you come over and you're going to stick it in that intersection, right? Whoops, come on. Come on. Okay, right there. Okay. And then I'm going to put a pen on this side and the other side. On. The paper really makes it stiff and hard. Oops, let me make sure this is straight. Look, and sometimes you can pull back and make sure you've got your seam there. Then I'm going to come over to the next one, put it here, and go through. Aha, uh -huh, good. Put my next pen here. Put the pen through that intersection and this intersection. Oof. Sometimes when you get that right on the intersection, all those layers make it tough to get the pen through. Okay. Down just a touch. 
keep that pin straight. And then, yeah, it must be in the right position. It, this one feels a little tighter to get it lined up together. So I'm just wondering what that's about. I'll take that pen and put it right here. And then now do my final stitching. All right, take out all of these. Let me get this pressed. Oh, that looks good. Good, good, good. Looks good. All right. Okay, here is the pumpkin. And now I've got to find, I forget exactly where I put the little stem. So I will be finding the stem. Then what I'm going to do next, which I won't do right now, but I'll tell you, I am going to then peel off all the paper. Now, normally they tell you when you're doing paper piecing, do not take the paper off until it's fully stitched around. But by the time this is stitched onto the background fabric, it's too late. Let me do let me do something really quick and just pull this out. It's you know, it's not a big deal if I have to make a new stem, but I need to learn to put things in very safe places. I'll keep this out just in case I need to make another one. All right. Not sure if I see it. And I'm sure that I put it somewhere I thought I would be able to see later. Okay. Well, at least I've cleaned up all the scrap fabric. Good. All right. Well, I know I will find that stem. Now. So what I'm going to do next is this is what I'm going to put it on. I'm going to take off all the paper. And that's not too hard. After doing the triptych, I'm really good at taking off paper now. I will take this paper off. And this is one of the reasons that you shorten your stitch length to do paper piecing. Because just tearing off this paper puts strain on those stitches. So if you've got your stitches nice and tight and small, you know. And this is a good thing to do when you're watching TV is tear off all the paper. Then once the paper is torn off, I'm going to take and fold it under a quarter of an inch. And this is when it's pretty good to use a little touch of glue stick. And then press it. Now, I don't know if my iron, it won't quite go this far. But I'm going to take with the glue on there. Then I'm going to take and press it under one quarter of an inch. Or even a little less if you want. And because I am not going to hand piece this onto the pillow back. This is going to be sewn, stitched down. And I probably will do, see how the, between the glue and ironing now, it's tucked under. What I'm probably going to do is use a blanket stitch, decorative stitch on my machine with some nice black thread. Stitch this onto the pillow. And do this for the whole way around. Put my stem on as part of this. And then when I make the leaf out of wool, have it sewn right to here, but then let it kind of stick out. So I will, let me see now that I've done this. But anyway, so then this will go in here. Now I am going to take and put a couple layers of batting. 
cut to this just smaller, about a half inch smaller than this shape. So put that on first, lay this on, do the decorative stitches around it, then come and stitch in the ditch along here. And that's going to allow it to have some 3D type of shape. Okay. Now, hold on one second. I'm going to find that because I like to be able to give you everything I do here. And this worked out beautifully to be so easy. Okay. I think, let me try. Let me try here. 2023 20, ideas. Let's see. Um, hmm. Fall. Perfect. All right. Let's see. I've got the pumpkin pen cushion. Let me see if I can find. Hmm, I'm trying to find the address to it. Shoot. Hmm. No. Let me see if I, let me look here. Let me bring up a tab and look under Craftsy. C-R-A-F-T-S-Y. Com. Okay. Oops.com. C O M. Okay. Craftsy.com. Let me look this up because I want y'all to have it. I really do. Um, it's supposed to be a type of patterns. Let me see. Fall patterns. Let me see if I can find it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Huh. I'm not seeing it. Okay. Um. A. Pumpkin. Able runner. Hmm. You know what? I don't think it is on Craftsy. Okay, so now let me... Hmm. National... Built a circle. Ah, I've got it, guys. I've got it. Okay. Um, Let me see. Thank goodness for history. Um... I'm going to go ahead and cut and paste so that you can be looking through here too. It's okay. Copy. All right. Let me come back to y'all. Let me close this out. All right. All right. Here we go. All right. Are you ready? Paste. And now I don't know why it's got the little number symbol on it, but let me see. I want to find the exact one. Hmm. Okay, let me try. That's that just says the patterns, but now let me find the Pumpkin table runner one. Okay. Huh. Well, I'm not finding the exact one. I'm looking. Um, not pumpkin patch. Well, I know I have this, and I know I put it, I, uh, I pa pasted it last week. 
So I will find it. I will go up as soon as we're done. I will find it for you and I will put it in the um, comments below. How about that? Because I want you to have it. It's been an absolute delight. And I want you to have that. So, okay. Ooh. Free Christmas gathering wall ha hanging pattern. Ooh, that's really pretty. I'm going to hold on. I got to enter my email address again to get this free one. So, how nice of them. Now, I know they like having your address because then they can try to talk you into joining whatever or but that's okay. I'll do that. All right. So now at least I got a free one for Christmas. So I'll have to, I'll have to save that one for you too. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me. And I already downloaded it. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm back here now. It's a link off craft scene. You have to sign up for their newsletter. Yeah. Okay. You found it. Good. Huh. Because I get their newsletter because I like to get the free patterns and they give you information for different things. So I think it's going to be a really cute little pumpkin pillow. And I like it. All right, everybody. Thank you. And you know what? I might make a second one and offset them a little because I have a little more space on this pillow. Might as well fill it up. <laughs> All right. Take good care of yourselves. Thank you for joining. Whoops. Thank you for joining. Whoa. It's a little. Hold on. Let me tighten it. Thank you for joining me today. It's been a lot of fun. And Thursday night, don't forget, it's portrait night. And I have been working on the second portrait of my pair. And hopefully I'll have plenty to show you Thursday night. Take good care of yourself. Do something special just for you. Bye-bye, everyone. Get out and enjoy the fall colors. Bye-bye, everybody. See you. See you next week for felting and a nice embroidered, hand-embroidered cuff. Okay? Bye-bye, everybody. See you. I will definitely share that. I'll find it for you. Bye-bye, everybody.